Hello grade sevens, it's Helen here and that means it's time for natural sciences. In today's lesson, we're going to be focusing on heating as a transfer of energy. So let's begin. We've looked at all kinds of energy transfers and we have mentioned heat energy transfers, but today we are going to learn about them in a lot more detail. So we've learned that there are different systems and in a system, energy is transferred from one object or substance to another object or substance. Here, you learned in one of our last lessons that this is what we call a thermal system because we're talking here about heat as energy. Now, the thermal energy of an object or a substance is the amount of energy it has inside it. And in our thermal system, that energy is going to be transferred from one object to another, or it could be transferred from one object to the environment. So let's look at this picture. And let's talk about what the heat transfer or the heat energy or the thermal energy, all these terms can be used in the same way. What is it? Well, clearly we have some form of fuel. And in this case, our fuel is wood. And the wood contains the chemical potential energy. Is this starting to sound familiar? Chemical potential energy and it's present in the wood. And the transfer that occurs is from the wood to the bucket or the pot and whatever is inside it. So we've got, let's say, water boiling inside the bucket. Remember that the heat is going to be transferred to the bucket as well as to whatever is inside it and the water is going to boil and therefore there is movement so we call this kinetic energy. But I did tell you that some of the energy is transferred to the environment. So as you are standing around the fire waiting for your water to boil, you are also going to get nice and warm. And that is because we need to show another energy transfer and that is the heat energy to the environment. And we often say that that is lost energy or do you remember the fancy word we used? Dissipated. It is lost or spread into the environment. Now remember, we said according to the law of conservation of energy, we cannot destroy energy. So we are not destroying it. It's just being transferred into a form which we cannot use. The purpose of the heat energy was to boil the water. This energy that is being lost to the environment is not serving the purpose of the original energy transfer, which is why we say that that energy is dissipated or lost, but definitely not destroyed. Now, these are important concepts to distinguish between. In science, temperature and heat are not the same thing. Temperature is what we use a thermometer to measure, and it is a measure of how hot or cold something is. So we could put our thermometer into a cup of water and we could measure how hot or how much energy it has in it. I want you to think of temperature being measured in degrees Celsius, just like for example, mass is measured in grams or in kilograms. So temperature is a measure. It's a way of working out how much heat energy a particular object or substance has. 
Heat is another story. In English or in language, we very often use the word heat as referring to, oh, I am hot, therefore my temperature is high. And we use heat and hot and temperature interchangeably. But in science, that is not correct. In science, heat is not a noun. It's not something you can see. Heat is a verb. Heat is an action because it is the energy transferred between two objects or between the object and the surroundings. And we've got a measure for heat and it's measured in joules. All right, so please remember that we must be very careful when we talk about heat, which is a transfer of energy, and temperature, which is a measure of how hot something is or how much energy it has, and we mustn't mix up the two terms. So let's have a look at an example of heating as a transfer of energy. Remember we said that heating happens when two objects, here are our two objects, of different temperature are in contact with one another. So here's our hotter object in contact with a cooler object and the heat energy is going to move from the hotter object to the cooler object until they both reach the same temperature. The fancy word we can use for that is equilibrium, until they are equal in temperature. Now, if we look at this example here, what are the two objects or substances in this example? Here we said there was our hotter object and here was our cooler object and the heat energy transfer work from hotter to cooler. Well, here is our hotter object. And here is our cooler object. So we could say that our heat source, or it would probably be a stove, is the one object. And the water in the kettle is our other object. At the start of the process, and by process we're talking about the aim of this process is to boil the kettle, which is the hotter object and which is the cooler object? Well, the hotter object is going to be the stove. I think you can understand that. Whilst we've just filled the kettle up with cold water from the tap, the water and even the kettle are much cooler objects. And we can use arrows to show that the heat energy will move from the hotter object to the cooler object, both to the bottom of the kettle as well as into the water. And we will discuss how that happens in, a next, in another lesson. So let's look now at another example. And I want to keep emphasizing that heating is going to happen when two objects of different temperatures are brought into contact with each other. So if you think about that, if you're ever given an example to solve and to work out where the heat energy is going and in which direction the heat energy is flowing, you need to look. Is this the hotter object or is it the cooler object? If it is the hotter object, the energy, the heat energy is going to flow away from it or be transferred away from it to the cooler object. So once you've, you understand in your head that when I'm talking about heat, I'm talking about a verb, a transfer of energy, something that is happening. And if you look at that and you say, well, which way is that energy going to flow? Let's identify the hottest object and the coolest object. And we know that the heat energy is going to move or be transferred from the hotter object to the cooler object. What are the two objects in this example? Now this is a little bit more of a complex example because we've got a lot of other variables happening. So let's explore this example in quite a bit of detail. Our first question is to identify where that heat transfer is taking place. 
what are the two objects. So let's make sure that we understand what the picture is showing us. We're seeing a picture of an ironing board. We're seeing some clothing. We're seeing an iron. And we know that it's an electric iron that is connected to an electrical output. So we can see that there are a number of components here, but not all of them are going to be involved directly in our purposeful heating. Our purposeful heating is to take the heat from the iron and to use that heat to iron the creases out in our shirt. So which are the two objects? We've got the iron and we've got the shirt. Of course underneath the shirt is the ironing board. So we're going to see that there is going to be a secondary transfer of heat and that is going to be from the shirt to the ironing board. All right. At the start of the process, which is the hotter object and which is the cooler object? Well, we are transferring electrical energy to the iron and that electrical energy is going to be turned into heat energy. So our hotter object here to start off with is the iron. The cooler object is going to be the shirt and the cooler object in the secondary transfer is going to be the ironing board and the hotter object will be the shirt. So we can see that we've got an energy transfer from iron to shirt and then from shirt to ironing board. Use arrows to show in which direction the heat energy will be transferred. So let me rub out all these other arrows so that we can have something very clear happening here. We've got heat energy from the iron to the shirt and from the shirt to the ironing board. When heating increases the thermal energy of the iron, what happens to its temperature? So if we had to use a thermometer and we had to measure the temperature of the iron at the beginning of the heating process, and while it is getting hot, we would say that the temperature is going to increase. When heat energy is transferred to the clothing, what happens to the temperature of the clothing? Well, the temperature of the clothing is also going to increase. Here's another question. After we're finished ironing, we fold our clothes and we pack them to the side. Why does that clothing get cold? Why do the, the uh, material, why does the material or the fabric making up the clothing start off warm and then we fold it and when you carry that to your drawer or your shelf and you put it away, it's now cold. Remember, we have got dissipation or lost heat energy. And where is that heat energy going? It's not destroyed. It's simply going off into the environment. So in this example, we have a whole lot of different ideas about heat transfer. Earlier on in our lessons, we learned about state changes. Are heating energy, uh, heat energy transfers responsible for the changes in the state of matter? So when we have ice being turned into water and water being turned into water vapor, yes, it's the heat energy that is bringing about the change in the state and why? because the particles that make up the substance now have greater kinetic energy and so they move a lot more and get space between the particles which is what is the difference between the solid 
the liquid and the gas state. More next time grade sevens about heating transfers. This was only our introduction, so I will see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you.